it's there's most likely not one giant piece of gold that you're going to dig up in the backyard, but there are a bunch of nuggets hidden all over the backyard. Don't go looking for the one, because if you never find the one, you'll have no gold. But if you do find 15 different nuggets, and those nuggets have clues, then you can find the rest of the gold. Podcast Growth Nation, welcome back to another episode of Podcast Growth University, where we talk all things podcasting all of the time. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode, episode number 104. It's really time to start treating your podcast like a business. I know that's a through line. I know I say that so very often, but I am convinced that is one of the reasons many people do not have the opportunity to succeed because they wait too long and they run out of money. Been there, done that. Today for episode number 105, we asked our community how they found our podcast. So, there's a lot of data out there of how do people find podcasts? Is it social media? Is it referrals? How, how do they find them? So as of right now, I think we have 730 people in our Facebook group, Next Level Nation. If you're into growth and maybe you listen to Next Level University and you haven't joined, check it out. It's a great positive place. I, did a, I, I asked a question in there recently. I said, where did you find... NLU, where did you find Next Level University? Because I want to know how people are finding us so I can double down and triple down on the things that are working and spend less time, energy, effort, focus, money on the stuff that isn't working. My goal in this episode is you will take away maybe things you should be doing more of, maybe things you should be doing less of. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Let's get right into it, right? Let's get right into it. I'm excited today. I'm excited to record this episode because I think I think all of the episodes I record are valuable. That's the goal, right? That's why we do what we do. But I think this is a super valuable episode because it's based in data and it actually has numbers associated with it. Okay. So the question I asked was, how did you find Next Level University? Six people said that they found NLU through a speech that Alan and myself, or Alan or myself, gave. At the end of our speeches, we usually have a slide. Sometimes it has a QR code, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on where we are and what we're doing. But it always says something along the lines of, if you enjoyed what we talked about today, we have a podcast that we do every single day that has topics similar to this. And if you're interested, give it a listen. So six people said that they found us from speeches. Now let me do this let me do this really quickly with you here. 10 14 22 24 26 27. Okay. So that's 6 out of 27. We get 27 answers. Okay? 6 out of 27 said speeches. 4 out of 27 said I found you as a guest on another podcast. So I listened to a podcast that I love. You ended up being a guest on it, me or Alan. I enjoyed the episode, and then at the end, you talked about how you had a podcast, so then I listened to the podcast, and then eventually, I ultimately joined the Facebook group. So four out of those 27 came from hearing us on a podcast that they already listened to, okay? Now, that number will, that number is a little bit skewed, Because a lot of people found us back in the day. But again, let's just take the data for what it is. All right. Four people out of the 27 said as a guest on their show. You have heard me say this. Being a guest on somebody else's podcast is supremely important. Not just because of the audience that you get exposure to. But you know there's one person in front of you who you're talking to. Who you might be able to inspire in one way, shape, or form. So four hosts that either Alan or I was on their show, they came and listened to our podcast after, then they joined our Facebook group. So four people heard us on shows that they listened to, four people that hosted shows came and checked out the podcast. Very interesting. That's a very, very interesting stat for me. This is a big one. Eight out of 27. So almost, what's that, like 28%, something like that? 8 out of 27 said, I was referred to listen to the podcast by an existing listener of the podcast. Pat Flynn, 
who is like one of the podcasting OGs and YouTube OGs, has a book called Superfans. It's all about this. It's all about when you add value to people and you go above and beyond, they're going to refer your content and you to other people. That's something we always try to do. We always try to treat everybody that comes into our community as family and we work really hard to do that. So that's good. That's a really good representation of the way people have felt. They they felt very, very well treated. So eight out of 27 people said, I listened to the podcast because I was referred to you by somebody I know, somebody I like, somebody I trust. Two people said social media. And then one person came from Podcast Growth You. Shout out to that person. I think it was Carla. Shout out to Carla. One person was from a live event that we were attending, but we were not taking part in. So we weren't speaking, we weren't coaching, we were just at a live event, we connected with someone, then they checked out the podcast, then they joined the Facebook group, and then one person said YouTube. So they found us on YouTube, and I know it's more than that, it's at least, I mean, out of the answers it was one, but I know many people found us on YouTube, commented on YouTube, I commented back, hey, if you're interested, we have a Facebook group, and then they joined the Facebook group. So what does this say to me? What it says to me is that most of the conversion from somebody who doesn't know you, like you, or trust you to a podcast listener requires some level of personal touch. Yes, YouTube is great, and we're going to put the episodes up there. I don't expect a ton of people to come join the Facebook group. I just don't. I don't expect the conversion to be super high. When we go to a live event, yeah, we're going to meet a lot of people. And a lot of people might say, oh, you have 1,700 episodes, I'll check that out. But if it's not for you, it's not for you. So I don't expect a, a drastic change from that. I went and, and spoke at Evan Carmichael's Mastermind. We talked about that last week. And I think there was probably like 20 people there. I don't expect almost any of them to listen to our podcast because it's not really for them. They're super high-level entrepreneurs. We're not really talking about high-level entrepreneurship on our podcast. So... I don't expect any conversion really from that. Podcast Growth You, this podcast, it has to be a very unique subset of human who is into podcasting and into self-improvement. All right, it's just more specific than just a podcaster or just somebody who likes self-improvement. So I don't expect a ton of conversion from that. Just like I don't expect a ton of conversion from NLU to Podcast Growth You. Social media, only a couple people. Kind of makes sense for a couple reasons. One, it's hard. I think it's harder to grow on social media than it's been in the past. We don't put a ton of time into creating custom content for social. Something we're probably going to lean more and more and more into, but it just hasn't been the priority because the business has been growing a lot and we want to make sure we're serving in that way. So, two, you know, not great. Referred by a listener. That's the biggest one. That is the biggest percentage. That means that you're doing something right. That means that you really, really struck a chord with someone. They thought to themselves, wow, this podcast, this community, whatever it is, you can think of this as a product or service. This product or service inspired me. It helped me. It changed me. So I have an aura ring. And again, I'm not sponsored by aura ring, but I have an aura ring that I, I wear every night when I go to sleep. I tell people all the time about it because it's a great product. I track my sleep score. My sleep score has gone up. I feel better because I'm getting more sleep. Awesome, right? It's valuable. And I want to share value with people that I care about. So that's one piece of it. So referred by a listener. This is why, although you might not necessarily be growing on social media, it doesn't mean you can't be having conversations with your audience. That is huge. When you're having conversations with people, you're building a relationship. And people are inspired and impacted by that relationship, and then they want to bring people into the community, especially if it's a positive community. If you find a really cool show, and then the host of that show reaches out, you're more likely to tell people, because you know they went above and beyond. As a guest on... So, the host came after you guested on their show. That's something that's extremely unscalable, but it's very valuable. Being on another podcast, again, it's not the most scalable. You can do it 10 times a day and you can get a lot out there. 
but four people, and then speaking is six. If you think about it, speaking other podcasts as a guest on a podcast and referred by listeners, what is that ultimately doing? It's ultimately lifting the perception of you. When you're speaking, you're on stage, hypothetically, let's just say you are. That's increasing the perception of you to the audience. When you're on another podcast, that's increasing your perception to the audience. When you're being interviewed by someone, that is increasing your perception by the host, potentially. And then when you're referred by someone, it's increasing your perception. But those are also the most valuable things you can do. Hello, my name is Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and I'm host of the Business of Happiness podcast. When I met Kevin and Alan two years ago, I had no idea of how much impact they would have not only on the success for my business, but also on my life. They've given me enormous perspective and true strategies, true tactics to take in my everyday business plan and in my life plan to make an even greater success. Kevin and Alan, thank you so much. I couldn't even begin to express my gratitude for all you've done for me. And if you're looking for similar mentorship, I highly recommend these incredible experts at the Next Level University. So it's not necessarily apples to apples. Obviously, do social media. But I don't expect a ton of conversion. I think social media is really good for brand building and relationship building. But there's a big difference between building a relationship and then seeing a conversion. Going to live events, you're going to learn, so that's always good. YouTube, again, YouTube's a different platform. If you're doing video, might as well throw it up on YouTube, is my belief. Not everybody wants to, to do that. But what this data really says to me is that the easiest and most scalable ways are also probably going to be the least valuable. That's really what this says to me. And it also says to me that the conversion is probably going to be lower than you think. We've done, I don't know, a hundred and something speeches probably, and six people in our Facebook group have come from that. Is it higher? Yes, because not everybody commented. But this is a really good, I mean, this is a really good thought too. As of today, I think we have 1,040,000 listens, and we have 700 and 20 people or 730 people in the Facebook group. Think of that conversion. 1 million listens to 730. Not a great conversion rate. So that's the, that's the whole other thing is the vast majority of people who listen to your podcast will never, ever, ever reveal themselves and they'll never go further into the business. It's, it's hard. That, that's a hard realization to have. But I think that's why understanding where people are coming from is, is so important because you can double down on it. So if you gave me, if you said, Kev, you have 40 hours this week to do nothing else but try to get more community members, I would go to, I would spend 10 hours and do speeches. I'd go to the people that I know that I've spoken with that might have me back to do some sort of speech, aligned audience, aligned topic. I would spend 10 hours on other podcasts and I'm kind of already doing that every week. I, okay, change that. I would spend 20 hours on other podcasts because we get two birds with one stone. So I have an exposure to people who might hear me and I also have an exposure directly to the host. So now that's, that's 30 hours total. And then I do another 10 hours just talking to listeners. Going through our Rolodex of, okay, who joined this? Who's on the mailing list? Who's in the Facebook group and I would send a ton of personal messages just checking in because again building those relationships is super valuable building those relationships is going to increase the likelihood that somebody refers us because we're doing something different so that's really the takeaway for me some of the most valuable things we do are also the least scalable and some of the easiest things to do are also probably going to bring us the least rewards I'm not saying not to do YouTube. I'm not saying not to do another podcast if you want. Obviously, do social media. But it's not always for the reason you originally think it's for. Social media is a nice landing spot for someone. It's a nice landing spot for someone who finds your podcast or finds you on YouTube or whatever it is. It's a nice landing spot for someone who's on your mailing list that you want to put a face to 
a face to the name. Are you going to get conversion? Maybe. But you're going to get conversion in the the ratio to how much you're growing on social media probably. If you have 100 followers right now and 15 of those people listen to the podcast, I think over time more people might. When you share enough clips or you talk about it enough or whatever it may be, they might. But my expectation is somebody who finds one of your reels that's about your podcast comes and follows you on social, the likelihood of them listening to the podcast is higher. So that's kind of the weird thing. It's if you have a thousand people who listen, uh, a thousand people who follow you on social and 200 of them listen to the podcast, I don't really expect much more of those 1,000 to listen. But how do I use that thousand to get a thousand and one and then a thousand and two and then maybe those people have a higher likelihood of listening? It's really a slow game. The podcast thing is a really, really slow game. It just is. Seven years, 1,700 episodes, that's one thing I've learned is it's most likely not going to be one thing. Now, yeah, you can have a guest and you can go viral and all that, but it's the likelihood of that happening is very low. It's extremely low. And going viral on social media does not mean you go viral with your podcast. That's a whole other thing. Going viral on YouTube does not mean you go viral with your podcast. It, it's just, it's not always connected, right? I have, what do I have, 2,700 followers on Instagram and we have a million, over a million listens. It's not always apples to apples. But that's, that's a big lesson for me is it's not one thing. It's how well are you doing all of the things together and how can you get a little bit better? How can you get a little bit better at whatever your things are? Maybe you're not doing speeches. Maybe you're not a speaker. Maybe you're not, maybe you don't have another podcast. Maybe you don't go to live events. Maybe you don't have YouTube yet. All fine. The things that you're doing, how can you do them a little bit better? Can you get on one more podcast a month? Awesome. That's an opportunity. Can you connect with one more audience member this week? Awesome. That's an opportunity. Can you create one higher quality piece of social media content? Awesome. That's an opportunity. So that's really the big lesson in this episode. It's There's most likely not one giant piece of gold that you're going to dig up in the backyard, but there are a bunch of nuggets hidden all over the backyard. Don't go looking for the one, because if you never find the one, you'll have no gold. But if you do find 15 different nuggets, and those nuggets have clues, then you can find the rest of the gold. That is ultimately my thought in this episode. And again, it's really cool because there's actual data. There's data that says referred by a listener is the, the vast majority. Speeches. Who knew? Who knew that one speech or 10 speeches or 100 speeches could do so much? Now again, these numbers aren't necessarily apples to apples. I'm not saying if you do 100 speeches that you'll only have six people convert. I'm not saying that. We have to understand that this Facebook group has been around for years and we've done a lot of speeches where we didn't ask people to come listen to the podcast or it wasn't the right audience or we did the this, this speech because we just wanted practice or it was in front of five people. That's another important understanding. And some of those people never joined the Facebook group. So this is a subset of the listeners, but it is the best data that we have. So my takeaway for you would be what could you do to get more data? That's, a, that's always a valuable thing. Are you looking at the data enough? What episodes are doing the best? What titles are doing the best? A really cool thing that I did with a client today is, so we use Buzzsprout for our host. Again, I'm not affiliated. I don't get any money for saying that. They just have stats that I like. I like the stats there. And what I did was I went to the month that we're in. I went to June and it shows this person has had a thousand downloads this month. And you can go through and see what episodes were clicked on or what episodes were listened to the most. And you'd think, well, it's going to be the most recent episodes, and it usually is. But then you start to see patterns when you go back. Oh, episode number five that you did five months ago had 30 listens? Interesting. Why? What about that title? What about that guest? What about that topic? So if, if we take nothing else away from this episode, I think the fact that data is a superpower when you start leveraging it, that would be a, a big takeaway. All right. If you feel stuck, if you can't figure out who your audience is, if you want to become a stronger speaker, if you 
want to monetize your podcast, you want to get more listens, whatever it is, and you just feel stuck. You feel like you can't do it. You feel like you're missing something. I will have my link in the show notes for a free 30-minute podcast breakthrough session. It is free. There are no strings attached. I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I genuinely just want to add value. If you ask me what our prices are, I'm happy to tell you, but I don't care whether you do or not. I just want to add value. And that will be in the show notes, as always. Next week, should we do an episode on YouTube next week? I don't know when Evan's episode is going to drop, so I don't want to say that yet. At some point, I'm going to do an episode on the four most important metrics on YouTube based on what I learned from Evan. But next week for episode number 106, we're going to do, this is not the way to do your podcast. I talk often about using treating your podcast like a business. But can you do that too much? Yes. I experienced it yesterday with a podcast pre-call that I did that I want to share with you so hopefully you can avoid some of those same mistakes. I hope you have air conditioning in your studio. I do, but I always have the thing shut because it connects to the bedroom and I want the bedroom to be cool when we go to bed. I hope your Wi-Fi is strong. I hope the people in your life believe in what you're doing. I hope you're getting yeses from guests. I hope you're getting yeses from other podcasts. Most of all, I hope you're feeling more confident as a podcaster. That will always be my, my biggest and deepest hope. Until next week, keep on crushing it, keep on podcasting, and I will talk to you then.